Hello and welcome to this maths tutorial video. In the last video we looked at Pythagoras' theorem and saw that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We'll be coming back to using that in a future video combined with what we're going to look at in this video. Now, if we take our triangle from the previous video, let's draw it again, and we'll draw it over here. So we've got a triangle uh, of sides like this. So this is a right angled triangle of sorts. So a right angled triangle and we've got sides uh, let's give them actual values let's say that this side equals three this side equals four and this side equals five so on these uh, sides what we can start to do is we can start to toy around with these values a little bit so far we've looked at this triangle as and we've only really been interested in this angle but if we now start to consider this angle here so we're just going to name this angle for the time being we're going to call that angle theta and we'll come back to this angle in a moment. But let's take some of these sides and do some stuff with it. So let's take uh, this side and this side and do something with those two numbers. So let's do uh, 3 divided by 5. So 3 divided by 5, well that's going to give us 0 0.6, isn't it? 3 divided by 5 is 0 0.6. So far, not very exciting. But let's have a look at the next one. So let's look at this side. And let's divide it by this side. So we do 4 divided by 5 equals 0 0.8. So that's a value. And then finally, let's look at uh, taking uh, this side and dividing it by this side. So we end up with uh, 3 divided by 4. And 3 divided by 4 gives us 0 0.75. Now, I'm sure you're looking at this and thinking, well, that's completely pointless. What are we doing here? Why is this of value to us? Well, let's just have a look at the next uh, thing that we're going to do here. If we take our original triangle and double the length of each side, so let's just extend this over here. So it looks something like this. So what we've now done is we've taken the triangle and doubled its size. So the distance from here to here is now going to be 10 units long. The distance from here to here is going to be 8 units long. And the distance from here to here is going to be 6 units long. Now by doubling the side of each size, what we've actually done is we've kept this angle the same. This angle hasn't changed at this point. But what we've now got is a, a second triangle that has sides of different values to our original triangle. So let's have a look at this triangle and let's do say uh, again we'll start off by doing this side divided by this side. So if we do 6 divided by 10 we get 0.6. Uh, let's do the same again let's do this side divided by this side so we get 8 divided by 10 which gives us 0.8 and then let's do uh, this side divided by this side. So we get 6 divided by 8. 6 divided by 8 is 0 0.75. So if you look at these new numbers that we've generated here, you can see that they're the same as the numbers that we had here. And actually we could go on and we could do this again. So let's extend our triangle one more time. Uh, and let's again, let's double the existing size. So uh, this is probably going to go shooting off the page. Of course, this isn't to scale. So uh, what we'll do is we'll we'll add the same on amount on again. So we had 4, 8, now let's make this uh, 12 units long. So we've still got a right angle triangle and we've increased each side by the same proportion. So now the distance from here to here has become 12. The distance from here to here has become 9. And the distance from here to here has become 15. So what we can now do is we can do the same thing again. So let's have a look at this. Let's do 9 divided by 15. 9 divided by 15 is 0 0.6. Let's do 12 divided by 15. 12 divided by 15 is 0 0.8. And let's do one more. Uh, let's do 9 divided by 12. And we can see that 9 divided by 12 equals 0 0.8. No, it doesn't. It equals 0 0.75. So we've got 0.75. So we can see here that, again, we've extended 
the triangle, each side by the same proportions. We've timed each side now by one and a half effectively. And this angle has remained the same and we're still getting the same values. So what we've got here is in each case we've got the same ratio between the sides of this triangle. So because we've got the same ratio on these sides and we've got the same angle here, we can see there's actually a relationship between the uh, sides of the triangle and uh, this angle here. So if we were to multiply each side of this by 100, we'd still keep getting the same ratio because we've got the same angle here. Now this leads us to a really deep mathematical insight, uh, something that's really quite interesting. And if we start to look at this now, we come up with three new terms for triangles. So what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, lose this drawing and we're going to start uh, looking at uh, how we can apply these to have different names. So let's scroll this up. So let's have a look now at uh, a triangle again, a right angle triangle. There we go, that's about the best one yet. And what we're going to do now is again we're considering this angle, this is the angle that we're interested in, angle theta. But what we're going to do now is we're going to name the sides of this triangle. Now we've already got this long side, we know what that's called. That's called the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Uh, this side here, you can see that the angle isn't touching this side at all. So we refer to this side as being the uh, we refer to this side as being the opposite. So this side we call the opposite because it's opposite the angle that we're interested in. This side here we're going to refer to now as the adjacent. So this side is the adjacent because it is adjacent. Adjacent means next to. It is next to the angle. So you can see the angle is touching this side. So we call this the adjacent. And, and the long side is always called the hypotenuse. So what we can do is we can shorten these terms down. We can just call this H, O and A. And what that does is it leads us to some interesting relationships between these sides. So if we look at this, we can say that the what we call the sine of angle theta is going to be equal to, now in uh, the last video we did three different divisions, didn't we? We did uh, the uh, this side divided by this side, so we've got the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So that gives us O over H, opposite divided by hypotenuse. Then we can say the cosine of theta is equal to this side divided by this side, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And then finally, our last phrase that we're going to learn is tangent. And here we've got uh, the tangent of theta is equal to this side divided by this side, the opposite over the adjacent. So what we've done here is exactly the same as we did uh, on the previous page. So if we look here, you can see we've done exactly the same divisions, but we've just given them names now instead of numbers. So you can see we've done the same calculations every time. So when you look at sine theta, what it means is that if you draw a right angle triangle that has this angle in this corner, the sine of that angle is simply the ratio between the opposite and the hypotenuse. It's the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Similarly, the cosine of this side is the ratio of the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And then finally, the tangent of this angle theta is the opposite divided by the adjacent. So we've got uh, our three basic trigonometric uh, terms here, sine, cosine, and tangent. And the traditional way to remember these is with the expression so ka toa. So what we end up with is something that looks like this. Let's just make that a little bit clearer. There we go. So we've got so s equals o over h, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, ka cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and toa tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So remember, these values, sine, cosine, and tangent, these are just uh, values 
uh, ratios of these sides to these sides. However, uh, these values of sine of, of any angle, whatever this theta may be, again, these are a really powerful mathematical tool for us that help us to find unknown sides of right angle triangles. So this is incredibly useful actually, because what you can do is you can say, if you want to measure the height of a very tall building, so let's say you've got a very tall building here that you want to measure the height of, what you can do is you can stand over here and you can measure the distance from you to the center of the building, about there. You can, with a device, measure the angle from here to here, and you can calculate what the height of the building will be. So if, say, for example, uh, you know that this angle is 30 degrees, and you know that this length here, from here to here, uh, is, say, 20 meters, what you've got is you've got two values that you can put into one of these trigonometric values. So we know that the adjacent of this right angle triangle that we've created here is 20 meters, and we know that the angle is 30 degrees, and we want to know what is the height of the building. So because we want to know the height of the building, we're interested in the value of this side, and this side in this triangle will be referred to as the opposite. We know the adjacent value, we want to know the opposite. So you look at your three trigonometric identities. We've got sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Well, that's no good. We're not interested in the hypotenuse. Also here, we're not interested in the hypotenuse. But here, we've got the opposite, which is what we want to find, and the adjacent, which we know. And we know that there's an angle here, 30. So what we know is that the tangent of 30, 30 degrees, is equal to the opposite value, which we don't know, divided by the adjacent value, which we do know. Now, the next question that's going to arise is, well, what is the tangent of 30? Well, on your calculators, uh, if you've got a good scientific calculator, you'll see that it has a tan button. So if you type in tan 30, it returns a value of 0 0.5774 when rounded off. So what we're saying here is that this tangent of 30 degrees has a value of 0.5774 is equal to the opposite divided by 20. Now we want to know what the opposite is. Here we're dividing by 20. So if we multiply both sides by 20, we actually get 20 times 0.5774 equals the opposite value, whatever that may be. So if you do 20 times 0.5774, you're going to get 11.548. So the opposite is equal to 11.548. So 11.548 meters. So we know, just by standing back here with an angle measuring device at the top of the building, measuring the distance from the base of the building to where we stand, we can see that this, we can calculate that this building has a height of 11 uh, and a half meters. And we've done that without having to climb up the building or get a very long tape measure dropped off from the top of it. So this is an introduction to the trigonometric values, sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, just a further note, you'll often see these uh, reduced to the following form. So sine becomes sin, like that. Cosine becomes cos and tangent becomes tan. So those are the values that you'll see in many places. So I hope this video has been of value. Uh, we'll uh, see you on the next one for further explanations of trigonometry. Thank you very much.